or another, that was okay. But maybe you're you're talking about the million dollar challenge demo. Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because we were there for the million dollar challenge demo in the audience, and when it was obvious that the guy wasn't going to show up. We decided to just cut out early, so we we missed the entire water bottle scene. Yeah, what happened was this was billed by DragonCon as a an actual million dollar challenge. Now the James Randi Educational Foundation has a million dollars to give you if you can prove uh, some paranormal claim. You have a psychic power. You can douse for water. You're communicating with aliens. You know, anything like that, anything that can be classified as paranormal, if you can prove it to 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 some level of, of statistical certainty, the JREF will give you a check for $1 million. Now, to date, we have had many, many, many people apply for this million and have a preliminary test, but nobody has passed the preliminary test. And the people have to agree on the protocol. So if you say, I, I can uh, tell you what the next card is in a shuffled deck, and we say, okay, how often can you do this? And you say 80% of the time. Then we say, okay, let's do this 100 times, and if you can do it 80 times, then we will go on and do it again for the real challenge. And if you can do it a second time, we'll give you a million bucks. And what happens is you find that the person actually does it twice out of 100 times, which is what you expect from statistics, right? Right. One out of 52. So nobody's ever passed the challenge. Well, what happened was at DragonCon, this was billed as an actual test of the challenge, but we never meant it to be that way. It was just sort of a miscommunication. This was just going to be a demo. We tried to get somebody to accept the challenge and be there, but logistically that's very hard. And so there was a miscommunication. It was billed as a challenge. It didn't work out that way. So we decided just to make a demo of dousing, and we had 10 pails with uh, three of them had water and seven of them had sand. And, And we had a guy come up from the audience and and douse them, try to figure out which ones were water. And he actually got two out of three, which is more than most dousers usually get, which was pretty <laughs> funny. And then we had a QA and a and it was a lot of fun. And the last guy came up and started talking about a couple of applicants who uh, – these guys are, are stage magicians who claim to actually have paranormal powers. And he said that these guys had applied and their applications were ignored or something like that. And basically Randy said he had not heard about one of these applications – because the guy had just applied and had just had his application accepted. But the guy in the audience just was going on and on about how Randy's contradicting himself and blah, blah, blah. And this guy's tried to, tried to apply, but he hasn't been able to. And, and it was just ridiculous. This guy was not listening to what uh, Jeff Wagg, who was uh, one of the people in charge of the challenge, and Randy were saying. Now, unfortunately, the incident turned a little ugly when uh, somebody in the audience threw an empty water bottle at this guy which I thought was uncalled for because basically this guy was making enough of a fool of himself uh, to not need something thrown at him. Because when we react that way, you know, when a skeptic reacts that way, it, it makes the whole movement look bad. Right. Um, there's no reason to do this. These guys are coming at these, uh, these issues from an emotional belief-based system. And if you turn around and say, you're an idiot or – uh, something worse, or you throw something at them, or whatever. It's not going to change their mind. It's not going to make them look any worse. It's going to make you look like a bonehead, and it reflects poorly on the rest of us. So uh, it's not a good idea. The best thing to do is to remain calm, to remain rational, and to keep hammering home reality. And you will win a lot more people that way. You know, you're never going to convince a believer. Stan Friedman is never going to say, you know what, I was totally wrong. <laughs> UFOs are just you know, swamp gas and lights in the sky. This guy is going to stick by his guns until he's in the ground. Uh, and so there's no reason to really try to, to argue with him, to convince him. But when you're arguing with somebody like that, you're trying to convince the people who are listening. And if you call this guy an ass or something like that, that's not going to help, and it's not going to bring people around to your side. We did want to ask you um – if you have an opinion, uh, if you don't, we'll just move on to something else. But we wanted to ask if you had um, been following Barack Obama's picks for people to head up various offices related to science and technology. That's a funny thing that you'd say that um, because I just posted about it on my blog literally minutes ago as we're recording this conversation. I am very happy. Uh, I have to be careful here because as president of a nonprofit foundation, I cannot – take political sides or anything like that. Of course, sure. on my own, I can say whatever the heck I want. Um, I am very happy 
to see very good uh, top scientists with an excellent background in the sorts of issues that they need to be well versed in being picked by Obama. Uh, Stephen Chu as head of the energy department, here's a guy with a tremendous amount of experience in, uh, in energy. Uh, a lot of experience politically, although not necessarily in government politics, but in certainly university politics and other things. He's got quite quite a long history. So here's a really good pick, somebody who is actually an expert in the field to which he's being appointed. That's kind of a shocker after after this long uh, period of time. And it was just it's it's not officially announced, but it looks pretty clear that Obama's uh, picking for his science advisor, John Holden, Holdren, excuse me who has a long history in energy production and global warming and all sorts of things like that. So it seems like uh, Obama is actually putting up uh, a group of advisors who have a lot of expertise in these fields. So that's very, very heartening to a scientist like me who's trying to fight people who deny global warming is real or that the universe is, is, is people who say that the universe is less than 6,000 years old. I uh, fight them tooth and nail. So this is a very promising start. Are you hearing anything about the direction of uh, NASA in in an Obama administration? Not really. There were rumors that Mike Griffin, who's the head of NASA, was sort of fighting the Obama transition team because he's very protective of the new rocket program called Constellation. It's the replacement for the shuttle. Uh, these were rumors. These were This was in the Orlando Sentinel, it was reported, and uh, it was unnamed sources and that sort of thing. Uh, Mike Griffin came out with a statement a couple of days later saying this is all nonsense, none of this had happened. But of course, you know whether this, this rumor was true or not, he'd have to say that. So it's a he said, she said thing. It's hard to say. Um, Obama, about a, a, a year before being elected, was saying that he might take a lot of money away from NASA and put it towards education. And then changed his mind on that when he got more information and said, no, that's that's not what I want to do. I want to fully fund NASA. But that doesn't necessarily mean he wants to fund the unmanned space program or the manned space program. NASA is is less than 1% of the national budget. It's 0.7%. Most people are shocked to hear that. When you ask people on the street, they think it's like 10 or even 20% of, of the national budget. When they learn it's less than 1% and they get all this stuff out of it, they're typically supporting NASA's budget. <laughs> But it's a favorite thing for politicians to try to cut, which is ridiculous because, you know, if you're if you're trying to clear space off your hard drive, you don't go and clear off the one kilobyte text file. You, you, you get rid of that four gigabyte high def movie that you've already watched. You know, you go after the big the big low hanging fruit, not the little stuff. And so there's a tremendous amount of government waste going on right now uh, in all of the big departments going after NASA is ridiculous, especially considering what we get out of NASA for the money uh, still. It's not like politicians are the most critical, you know, thinking people of all time, uh, and so <laughs> they tend to go after NASA. And so it is a concern. I am concerned about it because I don't know what the Obama administration is going to do. They seem to be pro-science, and he's, he's saying the right stuff. But you know, when the rubber hits the road uh, in the coming years, we'll see what really happens. So, uh, what would a theoretical NASA director, Phil Plate, do? Where would your focuses be if you were, if you were given the opportunity? <laughs> I'd embezzle ten billion dollars and disappear. Um, <laughs> right <laughs> there, you go. I, that's a good question. I actually, I never really thought about it. Like um, Constellation, for example. Uh, I think most people have the attitude that, uh, despite its its uh, problems and theoretical problems, that it's it's the only game. There's no going back on it now. It seems. Well, no, that's that's really true. The shuttle is being retired, and there are a handful of shuttle flights, and in 2010, it's done. And given that it's 30-year-old technology, I'm glad. It was it was always over-engineered for what it was designed to do. This is what happens when you have billions of dollars going into a program, and every senator and every congressman wants to make sure that their local state and district has some finger in the pie. And so the shuttle was designed to be reusable and cheap, and it was overbuilt for that and wound up costing more than simple reusable rockets like Constellation. So I think Constellation is fine. I like the idea of these these single-use rockets that can do heavy payload lift. But I'd like to make sure that uh, science doesn't get short shrift. Uh, the manned space program is important. I think it's very cool and inspiring. Uh, I like the idea of us going to orbit, but I like the idea of us going to the moon a lot more. Uh, <laughs> the science that can be done with the space shuttle 